Hello and welcome to Comic Drake, where I talk about comic books, my name is Drake. There's no real way to deny that despite comic book superheroes being more popular than ever in video games and movies and all those other stuff, the comic book industry itself is dying. But here is the hard truth that a lot of comic nerds like myself don't really want to talk about, and it's that most of the problems that the comic book industry as a whole has are ones that they pretty much created for themselves. So as someone whose literal full-time job is to talk about comic books and the comic book industry, here's my take. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be focusing on the two main comic book publishers, DC and Marvel Comics. Other publishers fit into the industry as a whole in many great ways, often subverting the usual problems that DC and Marvel get themselves into, but we'll talk about them a little bit later. Okay, so let's get the most obvious issue out of the way first. Marvel and DC have have needlessly complex continuity that is outsider unfriendly and alienates new readers. This was my biggest hurdle when trying to get into comics, and it's generally what I hear people claim when they say that they don't even want to try comics out in the first place. For decades, these two big publishers have told literally thousands of stories in these large connected universes that outsiders think that they need to have memorized in order to enjoy books. And while that last part just isn't true, it doesn't change the fact that this misinformation is a huge problem. It was hard for me to accept that I was never going to know everything, but that was a realization that I had to get to by talking to people at comic book shops and online. Both big publishers release plenty of great jumping on points, but they do a terrible job of making that clear. Marvel was really weird recently by putting a big number one on issues that started a new story. The idea was, this says number one and it's the start of something new, so this will entice new readers to give it a shot. However, these books generally also had a separate issue number on it, which is very confusing for these new readers. Like it or not, it's human nature to want to start at the beginning of something. Even if it is a new storyline, then most people aren't going to want to start a book that's at issue 24, no matter if you put a giant number one on it or not. That also brings me to another point, in that the numbering system can also scare away people. I would personally like it if books were printed as miniseries more often. Having a legitimate issue number one is going to entice more people than having a huge legacy number that's just going to confuse and scare off potential new readers. Even then though, it's great to have a new jumping on point, but that means essentially nothing if you don't advertise it. Like, oh my god, the comic book industry is absolutely terrible at marketing. The only places that I've ever seen comics advertised are in comic book stores, comic websites, and other comics themselves. How is that supposed to grow your audience? All you're really doing is milking more cash from an already shrinking market. If there is a new badass Iron Man book coming out that would be a great place for new readers to get started, then let the people know. Buy a billboard, make some Facebook ads, do something other than hoping that people will like the movies enough to drop by a store out of sheer curiosity. Now, Marvel did try running ads to their comics before select screenings of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, but it wasn't that widespread and really didn't do much to make it clear that these were jumping on points. My ideal ad is, hey look, there's this new Iron Man book, it's a great place to start and you don't need to worry about knowing decades of lore. It's got Tony Stark fighting a dragon in a giant mech suit, so give it a shot. Go to your local store and buy it. Even then, some people don't even know where to buy comics. With the exception of collected paperbacks and graphic novels being stocked at book retailers, the only real place to get single issues of comics are at your local comic book shop. Something that one, not everybody even has, and two, some people don't even want to visit with the awful reputation that they've gotten in the media. I have definitely lucked out that there are great shops with friendly people near me, but I've spoken to plenty of people where this is simply not the case. Oh my god, how are you focusing oh, yeah, in so strong? <laughs> One of the big reasons why the old Sonic the Hedgehog Archie comics were so popular is that you could get them at grocery stores. Making comic books more available would definitely not hurt. And also, a huge props to DC for recently putting out anthology collections at Walmart. These books take a Bronze Age slash Shonen Jump style approach with multiple stories in one book. This could seriously bring in new readers if it's handled well. Here's another issue that I have. The need to read multiple books to keep up with one storyline. 
Now, this is not the same as needing to keep up with an entire connected universe. I'm talking more about how it's stupid that, for say, the death of the family story, you need to read Batman, then Batgirl, then Catwoman, then back to Batman, etc. This one story needs you to read nine different series. It's one thing to have tie-ins, but when the literal next part of a Batman storyline is in a different book entirely, then it is extremely transparent that this is just done to make people buy books that they normally wouldn't purchase. A big reason why indie comics and manga are getting so popular is because there's only one book that you need to read in order to get the complete story. If you like the series, then all you have to do is just keep reading it. Making it to where you need to buy extra products just to get the core narrative is incredibly scummy, since comics, albeit cheap issue by issue, get pretty expensive after a while. To help offset that cost, it sure would be nice to buy them digitally, since most digital copies of traditional books are cheaper than their physical counterparts. Parts. Nope, not for comics. A brand new issue of a comic is the same price no matter what format you purchase it in. That makes no sense. I mean, I get that physical books have advertisements in them, which helps offset the cost, but you're telling me that not shipping out thousands of physical books is just as expensive as releasing a PDF? It also doesn't help that essentially every single physical comic goes through Diamond Comic Distributors, a company that I have my own problems with that I might make a dedicated video for. Speaking of digital, Comixology, which is my preferred digital distributor, has a great selection of free books, but it could seriously use some more love. If Marvel and DC release some of their more classic stories in their entirety for free, then there is a solid chance that this could potentially hook new readers, allowing them to fall in love with characters with no financial bar to entry. It's worth noting that while services like Marvel Unlimited and Comixology Unlimited are great and are fairly priced, actual free experiences could also seriously help. Now, I've been focusing on distribution a lot for this video, but that's not to say that the storytelling couldn't use some work as well. I honestly have a problem with the comics more or less only being used to test concepts for stuff like the movies and video games. It often feels like by trying to constantly force new characters instead of building off of already great established ones that are lesser known and or underutilized, Marvel and DC are just throwing a million new ideas at the wall and trying to see what sticks. And for the stuff that does end up sticking, the cool and complex changes that are made to the status quo tend to get instantly undone around the time that a big movie comes out. See, comics do in fact bend backwards so much in order to accommodate the movie watchers. As a big example of this, then just take a look at Star Lord. He was not only completely redesigned to resemble his MCU appearance, but his entire personality changed to be more in line as well. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing since, in my opinion, the MCU Star-Lord is a much better character all around than his comic counterpart, but it just goes to show that the source material, frankly, isn't what matters anymore. And that sucks. Finally, and I will fully admit that my bias is going to show here a lot, I really do think that it would be nice if the comic publishers recognized the value that comic book YouTubers like myself are having on the industry. There have been many instances where my viewers have gone out and purchased books that I have personally recommended. So this is literally just free advertising, something that, again, the industry doesn't really do themselves. Honestly, the easiest thing to do would just be sharing some of our content on your social media platforms sometime. With the huge following that Marvel and DC have on all of these different social media platforms, then that exposure would be amazing for me. And I would honestly just love to keep gushing about the comics that I love. And really, that's the core of this entire thing. I'm not talking about all of these problems because I hate the comic book industry, but because I love it so much. I think that the industry can and should be better than it currently is, because right now it's going to shrink more and more and more until the source material for these video games, these shows, these movies, movies is going to not be a viable business practice if it isn't already. And I really think that if we give enough love and attention to grow this, then we're going to be in a brand new era of comic books. It's going to be amazing, and I hope it happens. But if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing or even watching another one? And if you haven't gotten into comic books yet and you want to, then you might want to check out this video that I did that didn't get a whole lot of views on how to start reading Marvel and DC Comics. I think that I gave some pretty good advice that I honestly wish that someone would have told me when I started it out. Anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.